Hi, welcome to this video on tips for keeping your house warm during winters. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world, so please do subscribe to our channel. As winter sets in, heating up homes and keeping them warm can be a challenge. Winter hits people hard, particularly those who are in energy poverty or people who spend around 10% of their income or more on heating. In this video, we will try to uncover simple measures through which one can keep their homes warm. Coming up in this video, we will look at number one, understanding of heat loss from homes, number two, controlling that heat loss, and number three, generating heat cheaply. There are plenty of tips and useful information in this video, so please watch it till the end. It is very important to understand the mechanics of heat loss from your dwelling, for if we learn it, we will be able to identify and target the most critical areas to resolve first. For any house, the external walls are the portal for heat to disappear into the ambient. Windows too play a major role in increasing heat loss. The picture on screen indicates that generally a third of the heat loss occurs through walls. Windows too can account for 10% of the heat loss, while roofs with a relatively smaller area compared to the outer walls account for 25% of the total. Around 15% occurs through the floor and almost the same amount of heat loss occurs through drafts. The strategy should always be to cut down on those losses before we look towards measures of generating heat. A poorly insulated house is like a bucket with holes. Turning the heater on in such house is like trying to fill that bucket. Logically, the holes must be plugged before any effort to fill the bucket. In a modern building, thick multi-layered walls prevent the heat from escaping easily. Heat has a tendency to rise. A significant portion of the heat is lost through the roof. In a multi-story building, having a flat on the middle floor has its own advantages. It receives heat from the bottom floor flat, while the flat on the top acts as an insulation. If your house is an old build, then chances are that the external walls will be built with two layers of bricks with cavity between them. A convection loop can build up in this cavity which encourages heat loss. A convection loop is a current of air that picks up heat from one surface and deposits it on the other. There are various spaces in which a convection loop or a convection current can develop. For example, it can develop in between the window panes of a double glazed window and that is why these windows are vacuum sealed or filled with an inert gas. It can also develop between roof slates and the attic. Note that convection has the ability to be several fold stronger medium for heat loss than just conduction. It is paramount to minimize the strength of these convective currents. It should be understood that static air is good insulator of heat. On the other hand, moving air that represents convection can increase the heat loss by several folds. Any obstacle in the path of moving air serves to restrict the convective heat loss. If you look at furs on the animals in the polar region, they serve the purpose of obstacles. They tend to restrict the movement of air near the skin and thus prevent the onset of convection. Cavity wall insulation can reduce the heat loss from the external wall significantly. Cavity wall insulation is essentially a foam-like material that is sprayed and it solidifies quickly. It fills up the space between the bricks. This restricts the movement of air and thus prevents convection currents. Even cheaper than cavity wall insulation is loft insulation. It has been researched that 270 mm layer of loft insulation can drastically cut down the heat loss from the roof. Laying loft insulation is the cheapest and most effective measure in making a home energy efficient. And often grants are available from the local government to assist you with the cost. To cut out the heat loss from the floor, rugs are a simple and effective solution. Carpeted homes tend to retain more heat than bare or tiled floors. If carpeting isn't an option because of the costs, then covering the floor with rugs or thick cloth can be looked at. Windows, particularly if single glazed, can be problematic. They can lose heat both through conduction from the glass and drafts from the openings in the frame. Double glazed windows can bring the heat loss levels 
down to almost the same levels as external walls, whereas triple glazed windows can be more thermally insulative than walls. The heat loss properties of a window are characterized by U-value. A low U-value is favorable. Just for comparison, the U-value of single glazed window is around 4 to 5 watt per meter square per Kelvin. The U-value of a double glazed window is 2.5 to 1.5 watt per meter square per Kelvin, while the U-value of a triple glazed window can be as low as 0 0.79 watt per meter square per Kelvin, meaning a triple glazed window can prevent five times less heat loss compared to a single glazed window. If the cost of changing windows is prohibitive, then a layer of cardboard or bubble wrap can be placed over the single glazed window during long winter nights. If you do that, make sure to wipe off the condensation on the inner window pane from time to time just to prevent moisture damage to the window frame. The next important factor that needs to be looked at is draft. As mentioned earlier, drafts can make up 15% of the heat loss from an average house. Fortunately, there is a simple solution to tackle them. One can use draft protectors to prevent the air from seeping through the openings that lead directly outdoors. These openings are not only spaces around the door and window frames, but also the letter flaps and keyholes. For draft proofing the window and the door frames, self-adhesive foam strips are very simple, cheap and effective solution. They are attached to the surface where the window or door flushes onto when closed. Building standards have improved considerably over time. In fact, some modern homes are so thermally efficient that they can get heated by body heat alone. It is worth noting that humans constantly release heat because of metabolism. The amount of heat that they generate can vary from 40 watts to 200 watts depending upon the activity level. The principle on which new homes are built is that they breathe in less air and ventilate less air out. On the other hand, old homes need to breathe in more air and at the same time exhale more air out. In light of this, modern solutions of making homes thermally efficient by cutting out all the air from the inlets in an old house can be counterproductive. It can result in buildup of moisture as an old house needs to ventilate more air to lower the amount of moisture it has. In such cases, an air-to-air -air heat exchanger can be used. The air-to-air -air heat exchanger is advantageous because it allows fresh air to come in and at the same time it makes the cold incoming air exchange heat with the warm outgoing air. This keeps the heat loss to a minimum. Air-to-air -air heat exchangers can be purchased from the market or they can be built cheaply at home. If again the use of air to air heat exchanger is prohibitive, then to get rid of the moisture problem one can use a dehumidifier. The dehumidifier will use electricity but once the air is dry, it requires less heat to get it up to a comfortable temperature. Sources that add moisture to the air indoors should be removed. Avoid drying clothes indoors and remove any open vessels that contain water. Moisture removal is not only beneficial for making heating more effective, but also for cooling air during summer time. There is also a passive measure for moisture removal. This involves the use of desiccants. Materials like silica gel are desiccants. They absorb moisture from the air around them. Many desiccant materials can be reused. For example, one can heat up the soaked silica gel granules to release the moisture locked into them. This makes them dry and reusable for trapping moisture. Silica gel granules can be purchased very cheaply. There is also desiccant wheel available from the market that performs the same function. Once measures for heat conservation are in place, one can look into effective heat generation. Solar water heaters and solar air heaters are a very low cost measure that can save you loads on your energy bill. If you're someone who enjoys a bit of DIY, then these units can be built easily at home. A video on making a cheap solar air heater is presented on this channel. The link can be found in the description. Solar water heaters have proven to reduce the heating bills by nearly 50%. In northern latitude countries, the energy required for heating can make up more than half of the total energy use. There are a variety of solar water heaters available in the market from vacuum tube collectors to flat plate heaters. 
their costs have spiraled down and one can get them extremely cheaply. We should allow more sun inside during the daytime if it is a sunny day. Curtains, drapes or blinds can help in preventing large convection loop to develop during the night. In Scandinavia, trome walls are designed to soak up the sun during the day and release the energy through the night. It is a great way of passively heating indoor spaces. Details on trome wall are available in another video on this channel. Lastly, just to reiterate, energy conservation should be the first priority. Investment, therefore, should be made on insulation first rather than on solar water heaters. Thank you for watching this video. If you learned from this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you would like to share your ideas or give any suggestions or ask any questions that you might have, post them in the comment section. Thank you for your attention.